I'm Derek Thorsland, product strategist at Citrix for our multimedia virtualization initiative. And I'm here today at the Citrix 07 My Forum. And I'm here with Lee Lavers Falvey from our labs in Australia. And Lee, can you tell me what your role is at Citrix? Sure. Right. Um, my name, as I said, is Lee Lavers Falvey. I'm a principal software engineer at Citrix. And I'm the dev development lead and architect for the Bookdoor project. Aiming at delivering high performance OpenGL support for Presentation Center. All right, Project Pictor, OpenGL. Well, show us what you're demonstrating here today, Lee. Right, so what we've got over here is um, uh, we've got a Presentation Server underneath this cabinet here, and over here on the right we've got an NVIDIA Quadruplex. Now, what this is is a GPU offload box, and inside this there are two ultra high-end NVIDIA Quadro FX cards. And what we've got is these cards are actually doing all the um, OpenGL rendering in hardware that this application needs to support it. So just to give you an idea what's inside that box, we've got two video cards like this, and these, these provide all the, the hardware support for the rendering that we're going to do. So what I'm going to show you here is uh, the difference between uh, Presentation Server 4.5 running Katia, which is a high-end CAD program from Dassault. Okay. Well, I know we've got some great capabilities in 4.5 with our speed screen progressive display for 2D graphics, but this is a whole league above that now. We're talking about 3D graphics, OpenGL, very intensive high-end CAD app. That's right. What would it look like if I were just using software-based rendering? So what we've got over here is as I try and rotate this model using software rendering, you can see that as I move the mouse, it's quite jerky. Um, it takes a long time for the software to calculate how each frame has to be drawn, and then that image needs to be sent down to the ICA client. So you can see that as I move the mouse, it's, it's quite hard. If I want to line up these holes, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a jerky experience, and it's not really that usable. Uh, so Pictor is going to do a little better, huh? Let's, let's right. see what it looks like with some hardware acceleration. So what I've got over here is the same application with the same model, but this one's running um, using Pictor, which is going to use the hardware to render the same frame. So if I click the same button and rotate, you can see that it's a lot more interactive. I can work a lot easier with the model. Uh, it tracks the mouse much more closely. And, and if I want to line up the holes like I did on the other model, it's, it's very easy to do so. And then I can, I can just zoom in, get some more detail on that grab that again, and rotate it, and, and you can see it's, it's a lot more interactive and a lot more immersive than, than we have on 4.5 well, that, software. That's, uh, that's very impressive, Lee. Now, as I understand it, I could be working on a workstation halfway around the world, and the graphics files here don't actually need to be sent to me. It's really just the presentation layer that's being sent. That's exactly right. So what we have is all the model data, all the intellectual property is centralized inside the corporate network. Yeah. And all we have on the, on the client, and in this case, is just this HP laptop here. It doesn't contain any model data or proprietary information. So if that was to be lost, there'd be no loss to the company. It would just be a laptop that's lost and no data oh, that's lost. Great. So the intellectual property never leaves the data center. Exactly. Beautiful. And, and the beauty of this solution is I can farm work out to suppliers and vendors who are able to work on my, on my data, but they never actually have access to the data. So if they happen to also do work for, for a competitor, there's no danger in losing that data or having it transferred across to another company where, where it doesn't belong. Okay. And, and we support a variety of client devices. So here we have a HP laptop. Uh, over here we've got the same program running on, a, on this HP thin client. Okay, so what kind of a thin client are we looking at here? This is just a HP uh, regular thin client with a fairly low end processor in it. Fairly low end, okay. Yeah. And, and we've got, you can see just circuit here running there. Um, so really, um, this is pretty unprecedented where you can run these high-end CAD programs on, on this, this other hardware. Normally the engineers have got these high-end workstations with, with these graphics cards in here that you saw before. Whereas now we can just give these low-end devices out and keep everything centralized in the data center and the rendering taking place there. Okay. So what I'll do now is I'll, I'll just show you the same program running All right. on the thing line. So again, I can, I can zoom in. You can see it, you can see it running there. I can, I can grab that and, and rotate it around, and you can see that it, it's quite immersive and quite interactive. Excellent, Lee. Well, thank you very much. I think it's a, one of the most exciting demonstrations I've seen in a long time. Yeah, thanks very much. Very All righty, thank you. So now we're looking at Quake 3 running over ICA. Right. Wow. Full hardware, hardware rendering. Is this going to work? Yep. So I'm just going to walk around. Oh, look at that. Full hardware rendering. 
This is why you need a high-end GPU on your presentation server. For those uh, times of the day when it's getting a little dull, you're looking for something exciting to do? Right, exactly. Play a little Quake 3. This, this is how we do our testing of Victor. Ah, oh, I see, okay. That's why we get so many people volunteering to join the test team. Right. We get to play video games all day. It's not a bad life at Citrix. <laughs> Having fun, Lee? Yeah, it's, it's a great job. Awesome, I love my job.